Hi, my name is Chuck Seisler, and I'm paying tribute to my friend and colleague, Harvard professor Richard Cronauer. It was a joy to work with Dick, who thrived on the data we generated studying human circadian rhythms. I have been guided on his insights throughout my career. Before he died, the Harvard Medical School Division of Sleep Medicine awarded the Peter C. Farrell Prize in Sleep Medicine, quote, in celebration of the life and work of Richard Cronauer, trailblazer in the application of mathematics to sleep and circadian rhythms, pioneering developer of a dynamic mathematical model of the effects of light on human circadian rhythms, including the effects of light intensity, duration, timing, and wavelength inspired creator of a model of the effects of circadian rhythms and sleep-wake homeostasis on human performance and alertness, innovative designer of experimental protocols, scientific father, mentor, and friend to a generation of circadian researchers. Amazingly, at age 94, Dick revised his model yet again to account for new data on brief light pulses in humans and other mammals. Just before his death in October 2019, Professor Cronar published a journal of biological rhythms paper describing his new findings, which he considered the most important paper of his career. It was a thrill to share the journey of discovery with you, Dick. We will all miss you sorely. I'm honored to present this short video tribute to Dr. Himio Lemmy, who passed away on December 15, 2019. He was one of the founding members of the Southern Sleep Society, which was established as a means for clinical researchers to get together to share information. He hosted the first Southern Sleep Society meeting in 1978 in Memphis, Tennessee, a year after he established the Sleep Center at Baptist Memorial Hospital. Dr. Helio Lemmy served as president and secretary of the society, and he commissioned the drawing of the logo that we use today, Sleepy the Owl. Dr. Lemmy was recipient of the Clytman Distinguished Service Award, and he served as chair of the Accreditation Committee for the ASDA, now the AASM. During his career, he authored over 90 articles in medical journals and was a global leader in sleep research. He last attended the 2014 Southern Sleep Society meeting in Memphis, where we presented him with a life-size replica of Sleepy the Owl. Dr. Helio Lemmy was revered by the members of the Southern Sleep Society. He was respected by his peers, and he contributed greatly to the growth and development of the field of sleep disorders medicine. I had the privilege of knowing Dr. Mahowell for several years, and I also had the privilege of learning from Mark. You see, every Tuesday at our center, we have a case conference we lovingly call Tuesdays with Mahowell. It's an open forum for sleep fellows, technologists, faculty, who are all encouraged to discuss difficult cases, or what Mark would describe as the strange and beautiful. During these conferences, when Mark spoke, you listened. Because of course, you knew he knew what he was talking about, but more importantly, Mark was honest and generous when he spoke about something. So even though I sat alongside Mark on Tuesdays as a colleague, I also felt like his student. We all did. I'd like to share a quote. In his remarks to the American Pediatric Society in 1923, Ellie Holt Sr. said, if you today have a broader vision of your science than the men and women of 25 years ago, it is not because your sight is better, but because you stand upon their shoulders. This is how I feel about Dr. Mark Mahowald. Ours is a young field providing a unique opportunity for the close collaboration between basic scientists and clinicians. This has resulted in a virtual explosion in our knowledge of both sleep and sleep medicine. Hi, I'm Rafael Paleo. Many times, Bill DeMint told me that one of the best decisions he ever made was recruiting Christian Gimmin to come to the Stanford Sleep Disorders Clinic. Bill opened the clinic in 1970, but in the early days, the clinic didn't do well. And it wasn't until 1972, when Christian Gimmin joined the clinic, that the program really started to do well. I joined the clinic in 1993. 
And one of the things I can tell you about Krishan was I was amazed when I would work with him, how he seemed to treat every single patient like he had never seen sleep apnea before. It was the first time he'd seen it. He never lost a sense of wonder and the sense of enjoying working with his conditions. He never burned out on sleep. He loved it, being a sleep physician. In fact, he was the first one to arrive in the morning, the last one to leave. For years, that was his routine. And he so, was so beloved by our staff that our, our medical staff has kept his white coat up. They, they, it'll be there forever for him. One of the things I think that was most important about Chris John is he taught us how to think as the clinician. He said to be unapologetic, not to say that we're pulmonologists or neurologists or psychiatrists doing sleep, but to say that we're sleep clinicians and that's who we are. We take pride in our identity as sleep clinicians. And to that, we have Christian giving it a thank. Thank you. For many of you who knew CG, you might describe him in words such as brilliant, passionate, outspoken, and driven. I'd like to highlight his most unforgettable characteristics that amplify these descriptions. First, his work ethic was legendary. He was the first to arrive in the clinic and the last to leave. Secondly was his depth of knowledge. Whether it was listening to his stories regarding the future of medicine, which politicians were terrible, and even which was the best pairing of wine and cheese, he always had an opinion. There was definitely no middle ground with him. Thirdly was his commitment to the field. He established several sleep professional organizations but if you approached him, he would always give you his time to discuss a new research project or a complex sleep problem. Lastly, although he has left an indelible mark on the field of sleep medicine by his groundbreaking studies, I'd like to think that his most enduring legacy is his trainees. He will be remembered by those of us whom he taught as an educator whom expected all his trainees to follow his example of working tirelessly, keenly observing patients, and prodding any whom felt short of his high expectations with the omnipresent threat of death by guillotine. Rest in peace, CG. Thank you. And when I arrived at Stanford, I believed in sleep medicine. I wanted it. That was something that I left Europe for because I believed that there was something existing there. And I want to thank the society, all of you, because you are the sleep medicine. He changed the world. How many people can say that? It's, a, it's amazing. You know, 10,000 students took his class. So many of you or your mentors trained in his lab. He had a vision for what the field could become and he helped it to get there. Some of us believe that, that this field is important enough and relevant enough to be in the mainstream of the American uh, research and health care establishment and that's, that's what it's sort of all about.